Hi there, Spencer Pullen here again. Thanks for tuning in. I've had a lot of questions about people asking me about my development process, specifically for the 8x10 film. So I brought all my stuff here. I'm actually in the classroom today. It's August in Florida. The heat index is 115. So I decided, you know, instead of going out there and melting, uh, why not do something in the air conditioning? So I'm here in the classroom, so this works out really, really well. So yeah, so I'm going to go over all of the equipment that I use and the chemistry. And then in a future video, I'll show you how I actually develop a piece of film and then uh, how I finish as far as uh, scanning and printing, uh, going into printer profiles and things like that. So when I got into film, there was a couple of things that I had to think about. First of all, where I live in Florida, in our specific situation, we don't have fresh water coming into the house. We only have salt water. Um, so that, that was an issue. I don't think salt and water we're going to, or salt and film, I should say, we're not going to get along too well. The other thing is I was thinking down the road is maybe I might want to travel, uh, go around the United States, maybe Canada, and I would need a system that would be mobile that I could take with me and another issue that I had is I didn't, as I don't have the room right now for a dark room. So these were some concerns I had, and I thought, well, maybe I'm not even going to be able to do film. But through the generous support of some of the other YouTube folks, um, emails out to the forums, I was able to make this all work for the things that I needed. So here's my disclaimer. This is what works for me. I'm not here to reinvent the wheel. If you have something that's already working for you, great, stick with it. If you're new to this, uh, maybe there's something that I can give you a tip on that might work for you. So, but again, this is what's worked for me and I'm still tuning it, playing with it to see what works. As you can see over here, I've got all kinds of things that I'm going to be showing you. And I do have a, a close up camera so you guys will actually be able to see all the different things that we have. So. Let's go ahead and get started. So the things that I started out with is here's, for example, I needed to measure some water, like everybody else or chemistry. So I actually bought a couple different things. And most of the stuff I got from B&H in New York. If you like some other manufacturer or supplier, go ahead and use them. Obviously, uh, whatever works, but here in the United States, uh, B and H has been pretty good to me, so I continue to use them. So one of the first things I got was this. I think it was from Delta One is the name of it, and it has all these different graduates that you can get. Like this one goes up to 600. Uh, this it actually goes all the way down to the smallest one is 100 milliliters. So. Again, this is very handy. It's very inexpensive. It's worked. The only thing is if you're if your eyesight can be a little challenging, uh, you might want, you know, it can be hard to read the numbers. That's the only thing. But other than that, you'll notice I also have some, I took a Sharpie and put some labels on this. And this is so I try not to cross contaminate things. But I found really what I use out of all this set is this big one. And that is just to measure my water for my um, wetting agent. Speaking of water, so how did, I, how did I get around the water issue? Well, since we have salt water coming into the house, um, I decided let's try distilled water. And that's actually what I use. I use distilled water for everything. And when we do the developing video, I'll kind of explain how I go through all that. But for the washing, the mixing of the chemistry, the, the, the final wash and the wetting agent, everything is done with distilled water. And the other nice thing about distilled water is I can go anywhere in the country, go to the local grocery store and get a couple gallons of, of water. It takes me to do about two sheets of eight by 10 film. I'd say about a gallon of water. So it's not too bad. And you know, it's, I don't know, it's like 80 cents or something a gallon. So it's not really that expensive. So anyway, so this is something that you might find handy. Again, I mainly use this, this big one. Uh, out of all this but so now this on the other hand this is from Peterson and it's a graduate and I believe it's a one and a half um, ounce or it's 45 milliliter so and I again I also put 
the with well, a sharpie on the little end right here says TF5. In this case, that's the fixer I'm using at this time. But um, again, I have one of these for my developer. I have one for the stop bath and one for the fix and one for the wetting agent. So I bought, I don't know, six or seven of these. So again, trying to keep the cross contamination down as much as possible. And this goes again from one milliliter up to 45. Uh, it's a one and a half, like I mentioned, one and a half uh, fluid ounce. So this is really, well, this is what I use mainly the most of, and they're, they're cheap. Uh, again, B&H has them. I'm sure Amazon has them, anything like that. So I would definitely check that out. Now, I found, you know, when I was online that you have to have something to stir things with, especially with one of the developers I'm going to show you. So they said, you got to go out and get this official stirring stick. So, um, it's got this little paddle thing on the end. Okay, yeah, if I'm mixing up on the developers, which I'll show you in a second, yeah, I use this. But for what I'm using now, and for what I've used for most of my stuff, don't laugh. I went out and got a thing of straws. And these work great. I just stick them in the... Now, when I go to mix my developer and my other chemicals, again, I went to a good old-fashioned Walmart and got these nine ounce cups and if i'm like for example what i'm working with right now is a divided pyrocat so i will put part a on one cup and part b on the other cup so i don't get them mixed up and then i'll mix them separately but when i go to mix them i just take a straw one for each again trying to keep the cross contamination down and just stick it in there and swirl it around and away you go so that's pretty pretty simple on that one All right, so the other thing that's kind of the heart of the system, I would love to take credit for this, but I can't. There's a gentleman you want to look up. His name is Craig Sheeks. He's another large format photographer. He's got videos on YouTube. Definitely check him out. The guy knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. He's been doing this a while. So he's actually the one, one of his videos that explain this system. And I said, okay, let's give it a shot because I needed something, again, that was mobile that I could take with me. So that's where I got one of these deals, the Ciba Chrome Drum. And let's see if I can lay this out here so everybody can see. And this is, this is all the parts. So I'm gonna show you how it goes together and how it works. Because when I first got one of these, I was not too sure exactly, I was not too sure exactly how this was gonna work. So when it arrived in the box, it was all together. By the way, this is what they call an NOS, new old stock. I got this from eBay. And some people like, you know, they, they say new old stock is, is good because it's supposedly never seen chemistry. And some people feel that, you know, folks are trying to get what they got out of it 30 years ago when they bought it and just put it on the shelf. So whatever it is you like, I bought three of them after I found this works. So to make sure, just in case. So again, I bought, um, got them from eBay. They're not terribly expensive. I think I got this for anywhere from $25, $30. And it's worked great. I've been using it for a year so far. I've not used anything else. And basically what, what you're gonna see by the time I put this together, it's like a uh, poor man's drobo, if you wanna call it that. All right, so how does this work? So basically here is one part of the end caps. Uh, you have this cup in this funnel and then this is the other end that has the end, the end cap and as well as this light tight um, plate and then of course we have the drum so it's nothing but a round piece of plastic think of like pvc pipe all right so kind of to get started to assemble this what you're going to do is you're going to take this part that has the funnel and you're just going to take this cup and this goes inside here like this. And it's just a pressure fitting, so it's nothing too, nothing too serious. So I just take my fingers and kind of run it around in there until it's somewhat tight. So what's going to happen now that this is together, when this gets inserted into here and locked in, when you go to pour the chemistry in, the chemistry is going inside this little cup. It's not going directly into this drum yet. So then what will happen is when you when this is in here and you turn it, I don't know if you notice, but there's like these little, these little divots. 
this is how the chemistry, again, it might be kind of hard to see in there, but the chemistry will actually leak through these little holes, which is what you want. So you start like this, you pour it in, it goes into the cup. Then as you tip it, the chemistry is going to start coming down here. And of course, your film is in here, curled up in here. And then as it turns, that's how you're, obviously the chemistry is going to get distributed on your film. Now on the other end, what we have, this is the other end cap. And this has got some holes in it, which is the way it's supposed to have. And it's got this light baffle. And thank goodness for Cibrochrome. They even say this side up <laughs> on this plate. So this just simply goes inside of here. And again, it's like a pressure fit. So it might seem kind of loose at first, but once you put it on this other end of this uh, tank and you just kind of press it, it all comes together. So that's basically what I use to put my film in. Now I've read all kinds of things as far as the how much to put in this. Uh, when I first started this, I actually measured how much liquid was supposed to go in the cup. It was about six ounces. Then I did what probably every guy does, is then I decided to read the directions. <laughs> and they tell you thir uh, three ounces. So that's roughly around... Uh, 100 milliliters. So for the developing that I'm doing right now is I use 150 milliliters. Um, and I'll explain that in a minute. And basically that's enough to, when the film is in here, to cover the film. I've not had any processing problems uh, using that kind of, that, that little chemistry. And that's what's nice about this. It's very, very forgiving on how much you need. You don't need gallons of this stuff like a, another system. So this is pretty pretty ingenious. So I thank Craig for, for sharing that. He saved me a lot of money. So please try it if you want to do that. He's also got things on his channel for 4x5 as well if you're interested in that. So definitely go check it. I'll put a link to his channel down in the description. Alright, so then the other thing that he mentioned is this motor base. And this is a Uniroller motor base. It's used, again, eBay. So real, real simple is once this is loaded and has the chemistry in it, basically all I do is I set it in the cradle. And here's the big, here's the big reveal. You ready? There you go. I wish it was more exciting, but that's all there is to it. Uh, basically, this spins and then it goes, as you can see, it goes back and forth. Here's a little tip on the, on the drum if you're going to use one of these. I bought, again, I bought three drums and I bought three motor bases. Didn't realize when they only say, oh, it works, and then usually what they'll do is they will show you the bottom of the base to show you that it's not all rusted out and everything. Not thinking to ask if the auto reverse works. So I've got one where it just spins in one continuous direction. So what I'll have to do if I ever need to use it is once this goes around the one direction, I'll simply take the drum up, turn it around, and you know, it'll go the other way. So that's how I'll fix that. So if you are going to buy one of these from eBay or wherever you're going to buy one, ask the seller if the auto reverse works. That's something I ran into. Oh, one other thing about... Um, this I failed to mention is yes you put your chemistry in here and it goes into the cup and then when you go like this it goes into the tank or into this tube part so how do you get the chemistry out so what happens let's say we're done with the developer now we want to put our stop bath in so what happens is when you tilt this back up now I'm looking at the part with the holes so what's going to happen is the chemistry is going to come out of here when you tilt it back up it's all going to drain out of the bottom of this so now it's empty then you can pour your next step in your process in you just tilt it it will then cover the film and then you can drain it so that's basically what you're doing so it's really really great now something that i had to also come up with is i like to collect my used chemistry and take it to the place where they take like old paint and batteries and things like that, you know, stuff that's really not good for the environment. So 
I collect it all into one gallon water jugs, the ones that I'm using obviously after they're used for the, the distilled water. So I went to good old Wally World again, that would be Walmart, and I bought plain old funnel. And this I believe is under the name of Flow Tool, F-L-O-T-O-O-L, and I got this again in the automotive department at Walmart, and it's whopping 88 cents. So this fits into the top of the one gallon distilled jug. And the reason why I like this particular one is you can, will be able to see the bottom of this fits into here and got, I've got plenty of room. So as I'm draining, I'm not going all over the place. So I've got some overlap. So this is great. Again, I label my funnels with the whatever it is. So this particular one again says TF5, which I'll explain in a second. Um, so I've got one for developer, stop bath, and all that kind of stuff. So I've got I don't know, four or five of these things. But again, 88 cents, you're in business. So that's not too bad. All right, so that's the motor base. Um, now here's another thing. Again, don't laugh when I got into this. I spent all my money on the camera. So I was running out of cash, so that I had to come up with something to it, for certain developers, they'll, they'll usually it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius is what they want. So you need a way to measure that. So again, I went to Walmart for $10. I got this thermometer. I know it's not a dark room thermometer. Uh, this is a, I guess it's a meat thermometer, but it is digital and it does, and I have used it and I can get it right to 68 degrees or even a little less. And I, I usually measure my chemistry like 67.5. And by the time I get it in here, it comes up to 68, and I've not had any problems processing it that way. So again, this was on like $10 at Walmart. It, again, I know it's not real fancy, but it works. So at least to get started, that, that, that'll work you just fine. The other thing, depending upon what you're gonna be using as far as your developer, you should always, in my opinion, wear gloves. This stuff is probably not the best for us. So, uh, now you got problems with latex, uh, so I got this nitrile, I'm not sure how to say that, it's beyond my college degree. Uh, basically that's a non-latex glove, they're these blue, bluish colors. And again, this is something you probably would want to be wearing. Ironically, I read the storage on this, I'm an only child, so this kind of stuff um, entertains me. Protect open box from direct sunlight. All right, check. Fluorescent lighting. Okay, we will protect the box from fluorescent lighting. <laughs> and and x-rays. So if you're working around an x-ray machine, you know, okay. There, there's our safety briefing. All right, so that's base. Oh, one other piece of equipment is for the wedding agent, which is or the photo flow, whatever it is you want to call it. Uh, I went ahead and got one of these trays, and this particular one has this little spout in it. I got it at uh, B and H, so I don't know. This was like another I don't know, eight dollars or something. It is eight by ten. This is the one that does not have the grooves in the bottom, and the reason why I did that is because I can use less chemistry for this. Not that you know chemistry is really that expensive. We're going to talk about that in a second. But again, uh, it's just got the flat bottom. And when I put my film in here, I only do one sheet at a time for like 30 seconds for my photo flow. And that's it. So I've not had any issues getting the film out. It doesn't stick, anything like that. And then when I'm done, I can just obviously tilt this. And then I can, uh, since this is just soap and water, I just go ahead and just uh, dispose of that. So that's basically the equipment. All right, so as far as chemistry goes, now I'm talking about black and white. I have looked at colors, specifically eight by 10 transparency. I thought that might be kind of fun. But for now, I'm only doing black and white. So I'm gonna show you what I started with and then kind of what I progressed with. So when I started reading up on large format photography or just film in general, I thought, you know, I'm gonna stay with one manufacturer's film and all of their chemistry so I'm figuring if they're the ones that develop the film their chemistry should be made for the film that makes sense right okay so what I started with for developer I'm going to show you my developer first 
is this stuff here called Ilsafol 3. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. I don't usually recommend tilting the bottles, but for this we'll do it quickly. All right, so Ilsafol 3. Um, this is supposed to be their high acutance, low grain developer, which is all what I'm looking for. For my photography, I like the minimum grain possible with the highest amount of sharpness. I've got friends that are totally opposite. They like to take HP5 and they will push that to 3200 all day long because they like the grain and that's the look they go for. And that's great. And that's why we're in photography, right? It's a creative process. So again, this Ilsa Full 3, you can mix it either as a 1 to 9 dilution or 1 to 14 dilution. I found this to be very aggressive. I could not get along with this. Personally, I tried everything for six months. I mean, I got, yes, I got some usable stuff out of it to, to kind of get started, but I found this to be very, you had to be right on the mark. Um, so I was looking for something with a little bit more leeway. So I put a, again, a question out on some of the forums and some people said, well, you should try the old tried and true developer that's been around since 1930 something. I said, all right, well, I'm yeah, I'm willing to try new things. Um, I don't want to abandon anything too soon because I'm, again, just learning. Wanted to st stick with something for a while until I kind of know it in and out. But I try I tried to keep pulling this as far as time goes. So I would cut even the film down to 50% development time trying to get my highlights and shadows to uh, stay in tone. So I just found this to be a little bit more touchy again. And it also, it seems to oxidize. If you don't put it in smaller bottles or something, it'll turn brown. So this isn't the bottle I actually started with, and it'll I'll just take it over to the disposal place eventually. Now, as far as developer goes, so I, I started with the Ilsafol. Then everybody said, well, you ought to try the tried and true developer. I said, okay. Good old D76 from Kodak. And I found that this is one thing that B&H will not ship. Uh, unless you have to go to the store and pick it up. So, however, Amazon will ship it. So, that's what I did. And we actually have a warehouse here in Florida now for Amazon. So, it was only like a one-day ship, which is pretty cool. But anyway, so I started using this with FP4+. Plus. I actually started with Delta 100 film. And that, again, was a whole other issue. But um, we'll talk about the FP4 Plus right now. So the FP4 Plus has the traditional grain. Uh, it's a 125 ISO if you're shooting box speed. And I use this. And right off the bat, this gave me a whole lot better look for what I was going for than the Ilsafol. For example, um, I'll put a link at the, in the bottom. There's a, a video I did at the Corshawn Historical Site down in Estero, Florida. It was a high contrast scene. It was in the middle of the day, I was inside of a warehouse. So what I ended up doing is I shot for the shadows and then when I went to develop for the highlights, I pulled it by 50% development time. I took, I reduced it down. So instead of let's say 11 minutes, I did it for, um, what was that, five and a half minutes? Yeah, it's Saturday. I'm not, I'm not qualified to do math today. Uh, so yeah, so we'll say five and a half minutes. And I was able to actually keep detail in the windows. I couldn't believe it. So this really has done well for me. And then I mentioned in another video that I was using this and some folks let me know that this probably isn't the greatest developer because it's full of sodium sulfite. I don't know what that is. All I know is people say it's a silver migration, allows for silver migration, meaning that the, your your end product is not going to be as sharp. So I said, okay, you know, this was, I don't know, $10 or something. So, but I did stay with this for a while and I was very happy with it. And what I bought as far as on B&H to contain this stuff is, I, this is a solid black bottle. I think this is a Patterson, or no, this is from Photographer's Formulary, this, this black bottle here. So, and then again, I just put a piece of tape on there and you know, it says D76 on it. So then that's where I used a little stirring stick for. So this guy right here. So you want to read the directions if you're going to use this. It's right on the package. It's a little bit confusing if you've never done this before. But basically what it says is that you want to 
uh, start out with three liters and they give you a temperature on here. It's in our case 122 to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. And you stir that until it dissolved and then you're going to add another 0.8, in this case, a uh, liter of water, I believe. That's what they're saying. Yes, 3.8 liters. So there you go. So that's how you're going to, you know, make sure this is totally, totally dissolved. The little term I heard on the internet is amateurs use it right away. Professionals let it sit for 24 hours. So I think that's to help make sure it's dissolved. So I just mix it up in a bucket. I have a dedicated bucket, obviously, and just pour it into this. This is the one gallon package. Um, I've been buying it in the one liter, which I found it a little bit more convenient. So whichever it is, obviously you're going to use it, but this is this these two go together. All right. So again, now that everybody you know informed me that D76 is got problems in, in some people's opinion. So I said, all right, well, what do I buy then that's better than the D76? That's going to give me the results I'm looking for. So I, I, a lot of people kept talking about this pyro, pyro stuff. There was PMK came up, then there was a, a pyro MK, I think, and then there was an ABC version and a pyro cat HD. So I'm like, all right, never heard of this. Not something else to learn. I'm always about learning. So after I took a couple of weeks, read a lot of forums, asked a lot of questions, what I ended up buying was this PyroCat HD. And this is in glycol. So this is actually the starter kit. So this is just a little piece. And this is from Photographer's Formulary in Montana. So I got this little, these little starter bottles to kind of get, check it out and see how it looks. It comes with, the, comes with destructions, which I think you're supposed to read. But uh, basically there's a part A and a part B. And it's kind of like epoxy if you've ever worked with that. So traditionally what you're supposed to do is mix part A with some water and then mix part B in with it. And it does a, some kind of reaction and that's it, you're ready to go. It's usually like one part of part A, one part of part B, and 100 parts water, I believe is what a lot of people use. Now, I, my, my end result is going to be scanning for now. So I did more research, and Sandy King, who actually de developed this uh, particular PyroCat HD, he came up with a system called Divided PyroCat. And what I do is I take and I'll mix part A with water in one of these cups. And then I mix up part B with water in the other cup. So when I go to develop my film, I'll stick part A in, which actually has the, the active ingredient. And this goes around and then I empty it. So I'm not mixing part A and part B to begin with. So then I'll take part B, stick that in, and what I've been told is then it instantly starts to develop as it moves around. And what this does is it gives me a flatter negative and easier to scan. So if you're doing traditional darkroom printing with an enlarger, you may not want to do this. Uh, so again, this is the starter kit that I just showed you in case you're interested. This is what I just got in a little bit ago. This is the next size up, so this should last a while. Uh, note that, you know, we're talking about one part of part A, one part of part B to 100 parts of water, so it's very efficient. When I'm doing the divided PyroCat, I'm using seven milliliters of each of these to 20 parts water. So you are gonna go through this a little bit faster than what the label says. I forget, it tells you on here somewhere how many gallons or liters this will make up. So, by the way, here's a little safety tip if you're gonna play with this. Get it in the um, glycol. I read a lot of stuff about the powder. If you're gonna mix it like the D76 and it gets airborne, it could be bad news. So, get it in the glycol, 
Uh, it's already in a liquid format, so therefore you're, you're safe. And you definitely want to use your gloves when playing with this stuff. So, I mean, that's just common sense, but uh, I've heard stories that, you know, this, this is probably of all the developers, I've been told this is probably the stuff you really got to watch out for. So, all right, so that is the developer. So that's currently what I'm using is the PyroCat HD. Have I noticed a big difference between the D76 and the PyroCat? Uh, yeah, maybe in the specifically where the highlight and the midtones start to meet. There's a much more smoother gradation uh, from what I'm seeing in the grain. So I'm, I'm still playing with it. It's, I'm going to give it you know, some more time, and then I'll make a decision whether I'm going to keep using it or not. So far, it's done okay. So the next thing we got to talk about is stop bath. So, or I'm sorry, that's fixer. We're going to come to him in a minute. So stop bath. So with stop bath, this is basically you put in after your developer to instantly stop all the developing. Now, if I'm using the Ilsafol or the D76, I use this. For the Pyrocat, uh, things I've read, there's all kinds of information when it comes to this that you can take this and water it down to make it weaker and use it. So what I've done is what Sandy King recommended is just to use water. So that's what I'm using. I'm not using this, the, the stop bath for anything with the Pyrocat. So, but again, if you're using the traditional developer, you may want to use that. All right, so here's our fixer. Again, if I'm using the Ilsafol or the D76, this is Ilford's fixer. Again, this is to wash away any silver to make the film basically, you know, light, light tight again. So anyway, this is decent stuff. Now, for the Pyrocat, I did a lot more reading, and I was told that I should be using this stuff called TF4. However, when I looked on their website, yes, they had TF4, but I heard about these chunks that would end up in these bottles, and you had to shake it and try to get it to recirculate in the, in, it was a super saturated solution, I believe is what they called it. So what they have is this other stuff you can buy. It's called uh, TF5, and this is supposed to be the next iteration in it. And this has worked well for me. So, I don't know, I forget how much I paid for this, but it's going to last me a while. And something I should note is I have these little bottles. I have each one of these little guys. Here's another one like this is for my, my, other, my regular fix. But since we're talking about TF5. So the TF5, again, I find I can get about four sheets of 8x10 because I only mix up... Uh, Couple, couple hundred milliliters at a time. I don't, um, I don't mix this whole thing in one shot. So I'm only got maybe this much in here. So what's, the, you know, I've got my tape on here. Let me know which chemistry is in here. But the other thing I have here is this other piece of tape. I got some um, Sharpie scratched out on it right now. Every time I do a sheet, I just put a hash mark on there to let me know how many sheets I've gone to. So once I get to about four sheets, maybe I'll push it to five sheets, then I will dump this and mix up a new batch, and then I'm ready to go. So, so far, again, I'm new to, to this TF5 from Photographer's Formulary. It has, so far, worked. Um, again, I'm just kind of seeing how it goes as, as I progress here. All right, so I think that about does it for the chem... Oh. We got one other thing, the wetting agent. So after you've developed, stopped, fixed, and then rinsed or washed, then um, some people use a wetting agent, some don't. I do, just because that's what I started with when, again, I started down this path a while ago. So I got the Ilsafol wetting agent. Now the dilution on this is one to 200. So this will probably last me until they wheel me into the nut house. <laughs> so 
So I only use a very, very small amount. And this has worked well for me. I know that a lot of people have used PhotoFlow, or I think there's another one called LFN. Uh, it's uh, very popular. So this is what I bought. It's, again, worked well for me. I just, again, put it in that white tray for 30 seconds, and then I just pull it out and let it dry. I didn't bring any of my fancy hanging clips, but what I ended up doing for that to let them, to let them dry the, the sheets is I took um, little, they're like office paper clips, but they're the black kind that spring apart. And then I take a regular paper clip and just put it through it and then hang it up on the shower curtain. So that's what I've got right now to hang up my stuff. And I think that about does it for that. All right, so how did I handle the darkroom part of it? Because I gotta get the film into the cassettes and I gotta get the film out of the cassettes and into our drum. So I will show you my little, uh, my little trick for that. And uh, hang tight one second. Okay, so for the darkroom part of this, again, I wanted to make sure that I could stay mobile and have something small and light that I could travel with. So I looked at some different options and what I ended up coming up with is the, the film changing tent. And this is from Harrison. So here it is. It's not very, it's not very heavy at all. Uh, I'd say maybe it's a pound. And it's about maybe two feet. Yeah, it's two feet-ish. Now this is when you get it. This is the bag it comes in. I'll get a little closer so you guys can see because this is rather big, so that's why I'll um, go back there and get it put together. But here you can kind of see it comes with this little carrying case. I was amazed I actually got it back in here this far. So just so you know, this little tab that it comes with, uh, what they're telling you is to use, avoid, it says avoid storing your tent in an area with extreme temperature variations like a trunk or garage. And also it says make sure to store your tent unrolled in a cardboard box or bag. They don't want you leaving it like this for long periods of time. So mine's always open at the house. I just throw it in a corner of a room when I'm not using it and it's ready to go. This is the jumbo size. They do make what's called a PUP, P-U-P size, PUP tent. A friend of mine has one of those for four by five and it works great. This one's obviously a lot bigger because by the time I have the 8x10 cassette open, you know, with this dark slide part out, and then I have the film box somewhat, un, you know, it's opened and there's three or four parts of the film box, it, it can get, you can have quite a big uh, footprint. So I kind of got this. But this is nice, again, because it does uh, fold up. So when you get this, you just take it out of here like so. So we're done with this. Now the challenge will see if I can get it back together again. <laughs> All right, so just to give you guys a close-up view, these poles that they come with, they just, they've got like a little bungee cord in there, and they just kind of go inside of each other, if you guys can see that. And then you just keep doing that to all the rest of them. There we go. And the last one. There we go. Now this is bent. If you can see, it's kind of bent in that kind of shape. And so, because the, the tent is going to be that shape. So, I'm just going to go ahead and put the next one together. Again, I have not had this really apart since I got started. So, this is kind of interesting. All right, so there is our poles. We'll just set those right here until we're ready for those. Or just throw them on the floor, you know, whatever. <laughs> this is either going to go well or this is going to go epic an epic fail and it'll go viral on youtube wouldn't that be nice all right so here's the tent we're just going to unroll it okay and you've got there's your sleeves where you're going to put your arms in eventually so you have these pockets on the end and this is where the poles are going to go and that's actually what's going to make this stand up that was the other thing I liked about this versus the changing bags is I found that the changing bag might uh, sit on the film while I'm you know working with it. I got enough problems 
crating myself that I didn't uh, want to get into the changing bag adding to it. So I went ahead and went with this. This I got from B&H as well. All right, let's see if we can get her back together here again. Now there's one. It's not too bad so far. I'm just going to feed this other pole through this black top. I don't remember this coming with instructions. So the first time I did this, it kind of took me a minute to... Maybe if you've uh, been in Boy Scouts or something, this is like putting up a regular tent. I don't know. I've been camping, but it was not in a tent. All right, we're just going to put this other pocket through here. Pull in the pocket. Okay. And now, let's see if she'll come to life here. There we are. So now you can see why. I mean, this are, I'm not sure how long these tables are. I'd say they're about one, two, three, maybe three and a half feet, four feet. And this is pretty much filling the tent, the, these two tables. Um, I do use this on my kitchen table at home. It pretty much fills the whole kitchen table. I have a very understanding wife. So basically this is a double zipper. And so when you, when you unzip it here, uh, you will notice that there's a baffle. Let's get you a closer look. Okay, so here we go. So we got you so you can see what's going on. So again, obviously your arms go in here, and then when you unzip this, there's this black inner baffle to help make it light tight. So I just unzip all of this. And there you go. It's kind of hard to see. Obviously it's dark in there, which is a good thing. But there is plenty of room to put all of my 8x10 film and everything in there. Um, you know, by the time I get the, the cassette over here, the film holder, then I put, usually put my film over here, and then I can take it out of the box and the baffles out of the box and all that. still have plenty of room to work. So again, a little bit more than a changing bag, but I find this has worked really, really well for me. Okay, so that's it for this edition today. I appreciate you coming and checking this out. Hopefully it gave you some tips and ideas. Check out Craig's site again, like I mentioned. There's a lot of great information on his, on his uh, YouTube channel and on his website. I uh, appreciate you watching again. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks again.